This week on Christian World News, shockwaves blasted this woman from her balcony back into her apartment. A survivor recalls the unspeakable horror of 9-11 and how God used this tragedy 20 years ago to put her on a new life, on a new course. Plus, let's roll. Those words from Flight 93 are forever burned in America's conscious. We take you to the site where the plane went down. What unique bond had the residents of Shanksville formed with the families of the Flight 93 heroes? And Afghanistan, 20 years after the invasion sparked by 9-11, despite two decades of democracy and some social progress, the Taliban is back in control and they're instituting strict Islamic law. Hello everyone, welcome to this week's edition of Christian World News. I'm George Thomas. And I'm Wendy Griffith. Thanks for joining us for this special edition of the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Well, in the two decades since the September 11th terror attack, New York City has seen the World Trade Center site transform from a disaster zone into a place of honor and remembrance. For one couple who lived right next to the Twin Towers, the tragedy at Ground Zero brought a story of grace. Paul Strand has more. Outside this apartment building near the Twin Towers, Christina Stanton told how her husband Brian, high up on the 24th floor, shook her awake that 9-11 morning. When he said a bomb went off, went off, a bomb went off at the World Trade Center. So he rushed onto our terrace and um, we were just in shock. Then the second plane roared past them to hit the second tower. And the shock waves from, that, from uh, the, the plane blasting into that building actually blew us back into our apartment. They rushed out of their building, heading for the southern tip of Manhattan, joining throngs of panicked runners. Christina chronicles it all in Out of the Shadow of 9-11. Some people were, people were bloodied, other people were in pajamas, just like myself. She describes how in Battery Park at Manhattan's tip, chaos reigned, especially with the booming sound of the first tower collapsing. People in Battery Park had a good reason to panic because the Twin Towers were both wider and taller than this present tower. And if they had fallen over rather than collapsed, they could have reached all the way to Battery Park and crushed people by the thousands. Then choking smoke billowed out from ground zero and coated them all in yellow sticky grime. Everybody was caught up in the smoke and were, I'm sure, worried they were going to be asphyxiated. Everybody was running around screeching and, and bumping into each other and, and catapulting over things. And, and I just remember looking at Brian saying, are, are we going to die? Quickly hiding behind this War of 1812 fort, the Christian couple said goodbye to each other and began to pray. That's when it hit Christina how shallow her walk with God had been. Lord, I'm sorry that I have not put you first in my life because I, ha I hadn't. Uh, he was always, you know, was a Sunday Christian. All around them, people began screaming at vessels passing by and jumping into the water, and the vessels came. This ended up being the largest boat evacuation in history. They picked up boats, picked up 500,000 people from Manhattan that day. That included the Stantons, who spent many days with friends before being allowed back into their apartment, where the terrace doors had remained wide open facing ground zero. And it was this huge, full-on trash receptacle. Um, everything was covered with about six inches of, of yellow dust. There were papers everywhere. Area residents and workers were told this omnipresent dust was safe, but it turned out to contain some 2,000 toxins. It was, quote-unquote, toxic soup. There's everything from pulverized concrete to jet fuel to asbestos. There were human remains. The city rebuilt this area. But Christina and Brian, like many other New Yorkers, were out of work, unsure how to move forward, suffering from that poison and post-traumatic stress. We ended up going to counseling over it um, for, for actually several years. Yet out of all this darkness around Ground Zero came a guiding light. The terrorists were shouting God is great as they crashed into the Twin Towers. But what they were really doing was a horrific act for Satan. But still, even in that horror, God was able to bring good. For the Stantons, having stared death in the face where the towers once stood, they now realized they wanted a real relationship with the God of life and were totally dependent on him for their future. They repented. I, I'd let Jesus out of a box on a Sunday and I'd go back to my life uh, on the weekdays. And it was just the realization that, that, um, that I've been living my life really without God. In her book, Christina tells how God then moved to set their future. It started with Christina reaching out to Reverend Tim Keller's famous Redeemer Presbyterian. I went to the church and they covered some bills for us and 
we started attending there. Not too long after, I got a job there at the, the church planting center, and then my husband got a job there. He's become Redeemer's chief financial officer, while Christina takes mission teams from Redeemer to minister all over the world. They saw and felt suffering during and after the attacks on this ground where the towers fell, and God's not letting that personal experience go to waste. Our whole lives are changed because of 9-11. It, it certainly deepened our relationship with Christ. The only thing that matters now is glorifying God and to help others in, in a hurting world. Paul Strand, CBN News, reporting from Ground Zero in New York City. Thank you, Paul. On 9-11, one hijacked plane thankfully never reached its target. The passengers and crew of Flight 93 stormed the cockpit forcing the plane to crash in a remote field before it could strike our nation's capital. Yeah, in the aftermath, the people of tiny Shanksville, Pennsylvania, rallied, helping heal the Flight 93 families. Heather Sells spoke with them about their memories and their hopes for this 20th anniversary. Clara Hinton was home alone that morning. I can remember it was a gorgeous day. She had followed the attack on the World Trade Center towers and the Pentagon. Then at 10.03, she heard Flight 93 hit the ground just two miles away. My house rattled. It was like a tree had fallen. Her TV and phone lines went down. Soon after, a friend stopped by with news of the crash. I just remember such fear coming over me because things like that don't happen in Shanksville. It's believed that the hijackers on Flight 93 plan to crash it into the White House or the U.S. Capitol. Instead, under attack from passengers on the plane, they crashed it into this field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. A few minutes later, the plane would have hit the town's only school. 20 minutes later, it would have struck Washington. Within hours, the town transformed into a crisis center receiving state and federal investigators. Our community was just round the clock helping. That fire hall was full of people with home baked pies and great cooked meals and sandwiches were, were available constantly. Chuck Wagner helped with a recovery effort and began meeting loved ones of the Flight 93 heroes as they visited the crash site. I just um, could feel a compassion not my compassion, the Lord's compassion. Community leaders asked Hinton, a grief counselor, and others to be available to the families. We talked, we cried, we reminisced, we talked more, we shared tissues, we shared coffee. Um, I brought several up to my home to rest. Today, many of those who live here have formed an unexpected bond with the families of Flight 93. All of them shaped by unexpected tragedy. Some will keep in touch with Facebook and others were just cordial, but uh, anniversary time is sort of like a reunion. We can catch up and see how the grandkids have grown so much. Markers around Shanksville bear witness to Flight 93, from a welcome sign to the fire trucks to a tiny chapel on the outskirts filled with mementos. The National Park Service fast-tracked a memorial to the flight heroes at the original crash site, opening it in 2011. Today, its rolling landscape and abundant meadows offer comfort and opportunities for reflection on how 40 people quickly banded together in a plan that would cost their lives to save our nation's capital. When you see this natural area and the wildflowers and the trees, this living landscape, and it inspires hope in many ways. It's a, it's a place of healing. Uh, even families talk about that, that for loved ones had to die, but what more perfect place could it be than, than in the arms of nature? 20 years later, this tiny hamlet is beyond the raw emotions of the early days. Wagner has published two books filled with photos of the tributes to Flight 93, and Hinton collects memorabilia. Some of their questions, however, will never be answered. I still don't make sense of it. I, I cannot imagine in my mind that kind of hatred that prompted an act like that, nor can I really grasp the heroism of those aboard Flight 93. It's, it's a different America than we 
we had back 20 years ago. It's painful in a lot of ways. And back then we were, we weren't Republicans or Democrats, we were Americans. I miss that. Yeah. For Wagner and Hinton, one of the hopes on this anniversary is that a new generation will learn about what happened in the skies over Shanksville and see the hand of God. It changes you. You, um, I feel closer to God, I would say, closer to God and closer to humankind. I, I know that when something happens, we bind together, we help each other, we are there for each other. And I think tragedies often bring out the best in people. And that's what I've decided to focus on. Reporting in Shanksville, Heather Sells, CBN News. Up next, Afghanistan today. Two decades after the U.S. invasion, the Taliban is back in charge. And they're enforcing Islamic law at gunpoint. That story. CBN presents God is for us. Verses of salvation, peace and victory from the Book of Romans. It is filled with verses that define our need for salvation. God's free gift of redemption in Christ. Call now to get your audio CD of God is for us. Verses of salvation, peace and victory. Yours when you become a CBN partner. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. These select scriptures from the book of Romans will lift you up and carry you through difficult circumstances. My hope is that you will let these verses fill your mind and heart. They will change your outlook and increase your faith. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com today. As the world watches from the outside. It's a big diplomatic tug of war here in the Middle East. Go inside the story with Jerusalem Dateline. Israeli archaeologists are talking about a discovery that could change the thinking about the Temple Mount. Join CBN Jerusalem Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell and get the biblical perspective on the event shaping the world. It's what starts in Israel then ends up going to other places. Watch Jerusalem Dateline Friday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. Nutrition, exercise, essential oils, weight loss, and more. It's Healthy Living with Lori Johnson. Talk about what's in this. Join CBN health reporter Lori Johnson to get the latest information from today's top health experts. This is fantastic. Find out what you need to know to live a healthier life. Watch Healthy Living Tuesday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. Welcome back to Christian World News. 9-11 didn't just change America. The U.S.-led invasion ousted the Taliban and helped foster democratic and social reforms for women and other minorities. Sadly, however, the U.S. pullout has left the Taliban back in charge. And the feared and hated Ministry of Virtue and Vice is back promising to enforce the group's strict Islamic laws. Take a look. Mariam, not her real name, emerged after days of hiding to withdraw money from a bank in Kabul when she, along with dozens of other women standing in line, were suddenly surrounded by armed Taliban fighters. They told me and the woman standing around me that they wanted to kill us all. In an exclusive interview with CBN News, Mariam, a Christian convert from Islam, told us she thought she was going to die. They called us infidels, that we weren't Islamic enough and wanted to know why we had left our homes without our husbands. The Taliban fired their weapons into the air to disperse the women. God really protected us. The owner of the bank quickly opened the doors so we could rush in for safety. The frightening moment happening shortly after the Taliban announced their new government leaders among them, by the way, four radical Islamists who once served in Guantanamo Bay on terrorism-related charges. This is a cabinet that only al-Qaeda could love. 
The new man tapped to run Afghanistan's internal security, Sarojuddin Haqqani, is on the FBI's most wanted list and comes from a family accused of killing Americans and Afghan civilians. The Haqqani network is one of the most formidable and murderous terrorist networks in the world. The FBI has a $10 million reward for information leading to Haqqani's arrest. The FBI no longer needs to wonder about his location. He's going to be helping to govern from Kabul. Secretary of State Antony Blinken warning that this new Taliban government will have to earn its legitimacy. We understand the Taliban has presented this as a caretaker cabinet. We will judge it and them by its actions. On the streets of Kabul and other big cities, protest and outrage against the new hardline government. These are dark days in my country. These are all dangerous people. These are terrorists who are blacklisted. Tafik, also a Christian convert from Islam, told CBN News in an exclusive interview from Kabul that neither the United States nor any other foreign government should give the Taliban legitimacy. How can they? The Taliban have crazy Islamic ideas and don't believe in human rights. The all-male leadership also disbanded the Ministry of Women's Affairs and reinstated the Ministry of Vice and Virtue, one of the most feared and hated departments during the Taliban's last regime. Its forces would regularly beat, stone and hang women in public. The Ministry of Vice and Virtue has a horrific history and, and some of the, the worst uh, atrocities uh, uh, under Taliban rule in the 90s uh, can be traced back to individual that ministry and people associated with it. They're the ones uh, that were responsible for putting women in soccer stadiums and stoning them to death. The Taliban has also once again banned women's sports, claiming that it goes against Islam's Sharia law. Islam and the Islamic Emirate do not allow women to play cricket or play the kind of sports where they get exposed. We will not ignore Islamic values, even if it causes opposition. We will not leave our Islamic rules. Maryam says the encounter with the Taliban fighters at the bank really shook her up. She, along with 20 other Christians, are crammed in a house in Kabul, hiding from the regime's fighters and pondering their uncertain future. I know that the Taliban are strict Islamic believers, but I'm asking Christians around the world to pray for the Taliban that the Lord would touch their hearts and someday they will know the real kingdom of God and the real king of the world, and that's Jesus. Let's continue to pray for the people of Afghanistan. Absolutely. Thanks, George. Well, angry that her husband died in the Pentagon, this 9-11 widow turned her back on God. What happened that melted her anger? That story when we return. From Washington, D.C. Good evening and welcome to Faith Nation. Uncompromising stories, interviews, and analysis from veteran journalists David Brody, John Jessup, Jenna Browder, and Eric Phillips. Bringing you the political news that matters. Regulation on the energy industry are going to have dramatic ripple effects throughout the economy. News you can trust. We're people who are committed to protecting the most weakest and the most vulnerable. Watch Faith Nation, weeknights at 6. Orphan's Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We're working in over 60 countries around the world, and with your help, we can do even more. There's an old African proverb I love that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. At Orphan's Promise, we want to run far so we can touch the lives of as many orphaned and vulnerable children as possible. But we don't want to go alone. We're out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us? God is for us, a special audio recording from Pat Robertson. Neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God 
that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Reduce stress and anxiety while dwelling on the promises of God. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to become a CBN partner and get your copy of God is for Us. Welcome back to this special edition of Christian World News. Major Clifford Patterson left home on the morning of September 11, 2001, and he never came back. For days, his wife, Tamitha, held on to hope that he was still alive. Then she got a phone call, and suddenly she knew her husband was gone forever. I met him at a function, an Army function, and he just walked right up to me and started speaking. Tamitha Patterson will always remember that day, the day she met her husband, Clifford. Doesn't hurt my eyes. <laughs> and uh, within six months, we were engaged. Love at first sight? Yes, it was. It was. Another day years later would also be etched in her mind. The couple, both captains in the Army, were now living in Northern Virginia and raising their two sons, five-year-old Clifford III and one-year-old Benjamin. Saying their usual goodbyes, they set off on their morning commutes, Tamitha to Fort Belvoir, Virginia, Clifford to the Pentagon. We always say, love you, love you, see you soon. And I, I can see him walking back into the garage to ride his bike. He rode his Harley that morning. Tamitha isn't the only one who remembers sending off a loved one that day. It was September 11th, 2001. Tamitha was already at work when the shocking images of 9-11 began flashing across TV screens throughout her office. Then another report came through. American Airlines Flight 77 had crashed into the Pentagon. I immediately called him. No answer. I'm like, okay, this can't be happening. So I called the Army's operations center. Nothing. I'm thinking, he's trying to call me or he's helping somebody. Hours stretched into days as rescue personnel continued searching the rubble for survivors. Despite the odds, she still held on to the slightest hope, praying for a miracle. Every day, I would take my youngest to daycare, my oldest to school, and I come home and I sit in front of the TV. I have the radio, praying that I would either see him or um, somebody found him. Then on September 26th, Two weeks after the attacks, the phone call finally came. It was a casualty officer asking to come see Tamitha. I said, are you bringing a chaplain? And she paused. And so when she paused, something just left me. I just knew he was already gone. So uh, I had a hard cry. On October 13th, 2001, Clifford was laid to rest in Arlington National Cemetery. It was just a few days after the couple's eighth wedding anniversary. Although she did manage to keep it together for her boys, Tamitha, who'd been a Christian most of her life, struggled to believe a loving God could allow such a tragedy. I was just so angry at God because I'd been praying so hard. I just, I'm like, okay, are you not listening to me? And I would be sitting in church. I mean, why would you do that? Why would you? Take him like that. Good person, uh, two boys that need him. Driven by her anger and grief, Tamitha poured herself into her sons and her army career, eventually making colonel. And while she still took her sons to church and encouraged them to follow Christ, she was pushing him away. What do we do? What did I do to deserve what I'm going through? It wasn't until five years later that Tamitha began to let go of her anger and let God heal her heart and soul. She was in Sunday school. The lesson that morning was about the biblical figure of Job. He lost everything. He lost his whole family. And then I thought about my family. And my boys could be without me and Cliff had I went there. And it, and it hit me, I'm like, what am I doing? What have I been doing? Why are you so angry? It could have been both of you. That's because on the morning of the attacks, Tamitha was supposed to pick up a document at the Pentagon. When she got to work, it was already on her desk, so she never went. 
I was so remorseful. I said, Lord, I'm so sorry. Um, even, even with me being angry, not doing what I'm supposed to do, you still kept me in my voice. Then I started trying to do better. I'm like, what makes me better than anybody else? What makes me better than Job? As Tamitha opened her heart, her mind, and her Bible, she realized God's love was always there and always would be. Everything that, that I lost by losing Cliff, if I remain faithful and continue to trust in him, then God can still have a bright future for me and my family. Clifford was eventually promoted posthumously to major. Tamitha retired as a colonel and enjoys her role as a volunteer coach for the Special Olympics. Her boys are now young men, both living their lives for Christ. She taught them, by example, to run to God, not from Him, even when their world is falling apart. Just because you pray and you ask, you may not get what you ask for, but that doesn't mean God doesn't love you. He already knows what you're dealing with. Continue to trust him no matter what. Wow, such a powerful testimony and yeah. one that we can all glean from and learn from. Exactly. First times. Corinthians 12, 13, 12 says, we see now darkly. One day we will see him face to face yes. and ask him all these questions. Amen. All right, folks, we'll be back right after this. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the work of your spirit, Lord God, with this movement Jesus. of getting the Bible, yes. Lord, into public schools. Watch the prayer link. Tuesday morning at 7.30 on the CBN News Channel. I'm Ephraim Graham. And this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Wednesday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. God is for us. A special audio recording from Pat Robertson. If God be for us, who can be against us? Pat Robertson reads verses of salvation, peace, and victory. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to become a CBN partner and get your copy of God is for us. Affirm your faith. Reduce stress and anxiety while dwelling on the promises of God. Neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com and get your copy of God is For Us Today. Available now. Thank you so much for joining us for this special program. We leave you with this image of the Freedom Tower and the blue lights representing the Twin Towers. The light's a symbol that will always remember the victims of 9-11. The tower, a statement that will always seek to be a beacon of freedom. Goodbye, and from all of us here at Christian World News, God bless you.